Yep. Very it's difficult to hear you. That's unusual. Uh, <laughs> so the new board members have been hitting the ground quickly. They've uh, had a lot of reading, a lot of material to go over, uh, a lot of discussion with the uh, uh, management team, you know, done a tour of all the facilities, catching up on the operations. Uh, most have been through uh, their committee member meetings. Uh, uh, this week, next week, the uh, board will be having a work day to assure that we're all aligned and delivering our uh, exceptional experience for all our members. So I think we're uh, getting everybody up to speed and getting in alignment. So the management team's uh, really been busy uh, the last month or so working on the 24 budget uh, presented for the board to review and approve by the end of the year. Uh, it's some challenging times, although we're doing well as a club. Uh, there's some new uh, challenges with uh, increasing costs for inflation, staff uh, retention costs, course, man course improvements, and manor house events. But we're working through there, and we should uh, should be seeing the first uh, first or second uh, draft of the budget here soon. I really want to wish everybody a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it's a great time to celebrate with family and friends and uh, just be thankful for the, uh, in this time of turmoil that uh, we have the opportunity and, and to celebrate. Well, key decisions yeah. and votes. Is that nice? We'll follow the mm -hmm. slides. Oh, yeah. Slides. Okay, they're in a different order than the agenda I had. Um, so we approved a number uh, of expenditures uh, since the last board meeting. Um, a lot of them were a number of them kitchen related, new chafing dishes, uh, $6,500. Um, the second item there is in, uh, an oven, uh, $10,000. Um, Range turf mats, uh, we've approved a $5,000 expenditure, but uh, I don't think we've made a decision on uh, the actual product we're, we're going to use. Uh, the Compass uh, capital planning software, um, we're partnering with Club Benchmarking. That's going to be a cost of $47,000 spread over three years. 6000 of that is capital and uh, thirty. $8,000 or $37,000 is uh, operating expense. Um, that'll be 21 next year, 13 the year after, and 13,000 the year after that. We just purchased a uh, used beverage cart that's in great condition, spent $8,000 on that. And the additional manor house windows, we approved a $19,000 expenditure. Um, to complete our, our window project here, and those are uh, on the way, is my understanding. Okay. On the on the range mats, did they just wear out quicker than we thought? Well, they they had about a two year life cycle going into it, two okay. to three, depending on utility. Okay. General thought is we could get through a third year on that, with the question of how rough are they at the end of next season versus making sure that you have a good service to get off of. 
Oh, it's in bulk because I don't use it very much. No, I've never seen you hit range. <laughs> if you try, it'll be there for you. <laughs> Thank you. In addition to other things that we approved was the uh, development of a long range planning manor house uh, subcommittee. Um, the charter was approved for that. That's a subcommittee of Mike Colombo's uh, long range planning committee. And we also established a what will be a short term or temporary committee for the uh, installation uh, of the Compass software uh, project for managing our, our capital funding over the next several years. That's it. Okay. Now, my turn. Um, all right, well, October year to date, we uh, saw some, for the month of October, we saw numbers come in pretty much right at budget. Kind of had a slower week with 10 inches of snow right around Halloween that um, allowed us, we had to not have our um, Halloween night, and then the course was a little slower, but we came into budget and we still saw um, good progress for the year. Um, we have, we're ahead of budget by 181, ahead of forecast by 212. A lot of that is um, knowing what we're going to do in November for sales that have already happened that are ahead of budget. So Lana has been able to fill any resignations that have came through. So that's really great to see um, those dollars come through. And we have, um, you know, every department, we've said it all along, has been continuously doing their part. Um, bringing in revenue sales, controlling expenses and such to make this 2023 really great. Um, we will be working, um, already talked with the finance team about how we can help support our capital fund with our um, net operating income excess that we have this year. It'd be great to have it help us next year, but that's not how it works. Um, but it can help us out with capital. Capital is like our little savings account um, that we can use for future needs of that. And then it could also help our cash reserve account, which is new. We've only had that a couple of years, but it helps us be able to use cash to off offset a loss in order to not assess members. So that's really a good benefit of when we do see extra revenue come in that we can use that. There's a question yeah. about, on the reserve. Did, mm -hmm. did we ever figure out a, a target number for that? Oh, we did. Yeah, okay. We're, we do. We do have one set up between around 150. We feel like that could cover two plus years. In the last couple of years, we've been budgeting like a net operating income of 70,000. Okay. You know, so 150 would cover two years worth. Cool. Um, there's a lot of different club benchmark things out there. Clubs our size have a couple million in cash. Or, but they also have a million dollars in loans. You know, um, our cash is setting a little lower. We're at the couple hundred thousand in our operating bank account. So um, that more of that reserve just helps offset that. You know, bring her. Anything else you want to add to that? It's exactly what we talked about yeah. before. Is it we need a little bit of buffer, uh -huh. not a lot, but if we. Uh, helps us with the cash flow, but we uh, working with Dan and with Lori and, and Jan now. We set around 150 could be our target within. That's a couple of. It's it, it could take us if there were some uh, downsize issues come up. So uh, that's kind of what we set without having it to absorb it. But yeah. And where, where are we now? 70 is our current balance. Okay. So okay. January 2024, we would see that increase per how we fill our cash balance ended at this year end. Okay. Yep. Okay, that is all for finance. We don't have a second slide. So any other questions? Jan, this is where you would make a motion to approve financial. I was just waiting to see if there were any questions. <laughs> I move to accept the October financial statements as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Financial is approved. Great. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Kevin Brown here, um, highlighting our featured employee of the month, uh, which is Mary Leland. Um, most of uh, everyone in the room probably already knows Mary, 
but it's nice to do a little refresher. Uh, you haven't heard about her or her uh, backstory. Uh, so fun fact about Mary, she's 28 years old. Uh, she's originally from Belmont, California, uh, California, and San Antonio. So she spent equal months of time there. Uh, she has a bachelor's from the University of Texas, Austin. And she is our lead server. And she's been with the club since 2017. Uh, her favorite aspect of Perry Park is the kitchen staff. Um, they're her favorite coworkers, uh, and she feels like she couldn't do it without them. So uh, it's a good relationship. It's a healthy one. So it's great to see that from um, our lead server. Hobbies that Mary has. Um, she doesn't get a lot of time to herself, but she likes to draw, uh, cross stitching, and playing video games occasionally. Uh, the funniest, best, or most interesting story about working at Perry Park is working the Gordon Cup. Um, the Gordon Cup is uh, a big highlight for the, the staff, front of the house staff. Um, it's very uh, inclusive, I would say. Um, so uh, giving those awards, and she roots for the blue and also the white. <laughs> not uh, she, most interesting place that she's traveled to is Japan. Um, so she has a best friend that teaches English there, uh, and she's trying to revisit that place in 2024. Great. I think we have one more slide. So just a little uh, note and message from me. Uh, Mary is the heart and soul of the front of the house operation. Uh, she's been with the team for over six years, and she's developed into a leadership role. Uh, Mary is known by all members um, who have spent time in the club for her outstanding service. Um, members seek her out to her ability to anticipate needs. She's very reliable and she has an outstanding work ethic. Yeah. So if you see her, just uh, congratulate her on her opportunity to be featured. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Mary. Hello to everybody online. We're here in the room. Uh, kind of a little recap. Uh, at this point, not a ton going on on the golf course uh, in November. It's starting to slow down there. We've had a really nice fall. But uh, a little bit of a, a financial review. It was a really good year for the golf operations team overall, and uh, not just with, throughout the team, but also the financial performance of that. So that kind of comes as a thank you to the members here at Perry Park for your support of the Golf shot merchandise, letting us kind of source your, your club needs, any of your apparel items, as well as bringing guests and just strong engagement throughout the year. So thank you for that. That, uh, that takes a lot of pressure off the club when that all goes well. Um, staffing, as most of us in the room are aware, some changes there on the professional team with some questions as to uh, how that comes about. The fortunate side, it's November, so we have a little time to put those pieces in place and make sure that we're ready to go for you. 2024, but we're confident that we'll we'll put together a good team and have another strong year for you next season. Uh, and then some upcoming events, just uh, some notes there. The survey for quarter four is relative to the golf operation. So um, tournaments, golf shop, kind of everything we do out of that, that side of the house there. So uh, we appreciate you filling that out, giving us some feedback. And really, we look at that as an opportunity to continue to, to meet your needs. And, and so if you have thoughts and opinions, please share them with us. And uh, we definitely appreciate that. So that's coming in December. And then Christmas sale, there'll be deals all month long. So we know that like December 16th is gonna be the Christmas party. There'll be an open bar and you know, all of the sale there as well as a great atmosphere, but uh, there'll be opportunities to save all month if you can't hit that December 16th. So come on down, see us there in the, in the basement. And then our final little detail here is the tea time utilization report for October of 2023. Kind of as we expect, it's starting to free up a little bit. Uh, that certainly falls right in line with the seasonality. October was a really nice October, though, with the exception of that foot of snow right there at the end. It was probably one of the nicest Octobers that we can remember, just gorgeous days um, throughout. So even though it was very nice, we still saw quite a bit of capacity there on the tea sheet throughout the month. And that's really all I got for you. Any uh, any questions? Yeah, all I heard was yada 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 open bar. That was on the sixteenth. <laughs> that's on the sixteenth. Yeah, that was bar. Yes. 
Okay. Regarding the course rating, yes. I know you've said this before, but just to refresh, mm -hmm. are we going to continue posting hole by hole next year? In order to, are we not going to rate the course next year? We're going to wait a year. We will. Uh, so there's kind of two two sides to that that question there. So the course rating is done by the USGA. That'll be done in 2025. So they adjusted our rating slightly for the new 18 poll that needed to be done, but they didn't evaluate the rest of the golf course. That's independent of your whole by whole score posting. They don't really look at that as a as a key metric. We asked you to do your whole by whole score posting so the GTNH committee could come up with your poll rankings. So your handicap poll rankings for both men and women. So we've begun that process now. Um, so next year, well, it's always good to post your whole by whole data. And having that data available to us in the future is not a bad deal, but it won't be as critical as it was this season. So you say USGA is already rated 18? They have, yes. Does that change the handicap rating on any of the others, or do we wait until they come back at 25? So the USGA doesn't have any implication on Perry Park's handicap ratings whole by whole. That's actually done within the club. So that's the GTMH committee's responsibility, working on that now over the next two months. To come up with those those whole yeah. ratings, that's where that posting data was really relevant. So the USGA will come up with your slope and your rating for each T. That's theirs. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to rate those individual whole by holes. So because of that new 18 poll is really what the foundation of the conversation that we need to to figure out where 18 actually ranks gotcha. within those holes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yes, Ray. And where are we at um, getting a whole by hole for green trees? So, USGA and CGA both do not recommend having different handicap ratings for different T boxes. Um, in our process, we're going to talk about that kind of the pros and cons and where we feel, but there's also some ways to do that where it's a whole lot less relevant on and impactful, where number nine will likely shift out of being your number one handicap hole because there's such a gap there in those, in those teams. So it's probably four or five holes. Yeah, yeah. There's some ways to to look at this process, and so we've just begun that conversation last week, and still a whole lot to be determined there. Um, so not not really able to speak to those points, but generally the consensus from the governing boards is not to have a different handicap allocations based on your tee that you're playing. So we'll take that into consideration. And if there's going to be any change, we we'd expect that by the beginning of next season. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All good. Thank you. We heard you on Ray just so extend yeah. Ray's uh, rating question. Yes. The same doesn't apply to men versus women. They do recommend having different for men and women, but just one man to one woman. Thank you, guys. Hello everyone, uh, Jason for those online, uh, happy free holiday weekend. Looks like it's gonna be nice tomorrow, but some pretty significant lows down here in Perry Park over the next few days, down in the, uh, the say mid teens. So a little chilly, a little chilly. So proper timing for blowing out the irrigation system. We just got that completed the last two days. That went pretty smooth, so excited about that. Uh, plant protectants are down for snow mold and fungicides, stuff like that out on the golf course. Uh, we started pulling all the FF and E in, the T markers gone now that um, the ratings are basically posting is closed. Um, we'll remove the rest of the cart signs, the rest of the bunker rakes, items like that that can get damaged throughout the winter. Uh, team's really busy removing some dead trees, scrub oak as well. That's what we're doing on the outside, the offset of the projects that we have going on. Kind of jumping right down to the bottom, which everyone's excited about. Cart path wise, our final day of concrete pouring for number 15 is tomorrow morning. Um, with the lows, we will blanket that to protect the concrete, leave that over the weekend, and then um, we'll tie the cart path edges in, which will allow people access in and off those cart paths. Uh, bunker on number, the practice bunker, the fairway practice bunker on the north side of the west driving range is complete, sands in that. So we'll look to open that next spring. Uh, practice area is coming along well, which is nice. So really, I mean, we, we closed out November really well as a team and pretty excited about where we stand coming into the wintertime. Any questions? So 
Do you expect to open the that part there right at the beginning and next week? Probably not at the beginning. We'll just see how it overwinters. Um, in the spring, we'll put some blankets over the top of it, some turf covers, see if we can warm the ground up, get that growing, the green growing as quick as we possibly can. You want to talk about the Starling? Uh, Starling, can talk about Starling. So we have, uh, the club's invested in Starling, which is a Wi-Fi solution for us out on the golf course. From a temporary standpoint, it's, it's at the booster station right now, which is in between two green and 11 green. So if you have the opportunity and you're going by, you'll see that little white dish, or square rectangular dish, uh, that is a Starlink satellite. So uh, if you go to your phone and you look at your Wi-Fi network, it's going to come up as Perry Park CC, I believe. And the password for those that are interested in joining that right now would be member with a capital M, 2024 exclamation point. Uh, what we've witnessed is it has a fairly decent radius in terms of you're going to get a really good Wi-Fi signal on two green, on 11 green. Once you crest a little bit forward past three T's, you start to lose a little bit, but the signal is good enough to, to make Wi-Fi calls. Um, the goal would be to evaluate some key locations in the future where we can either station these satellites. Uh, likely this one is going to move up to the restroom on number four since it is the furthest point. Um, from the clubhouse and, and does lack good cellular coverage. Thank you. Hey everybody, Lani here um, reporting on October. We ended up uh, for the month at 314 to our 315 cap. So that's just a breakdown for you. Um, so top three updates are going to be for October. We acquired two full golf memberships and work uh, junior golf. Um, I think that's a typo. Um, I think I should be more social. Uh, one pro to full, one junior to full, and then one social to pro. The initiation fee updates, uh, there's actually an update um, tonight. Our initiation fee is currently at 19, and it's going to be going to 20 soon. Uh, our junior golf is going to be still at 12, professional at 8,500, social at one. So we'll revisit that in January of um, the year. For our membership uh, types, uh, we do have 204 current social memberships. That includes our centennial social and our social. Um, average age is 60, but here's a little more breakdown. Well, we did move one off the junior wait list. So currently we're at 31 juniors. Uh, as far as retention, um, this will be uh, resignation reasons, um, did not use moving lifestyle change and medical issues. Uh, we're a total uh, golf resignation is 35 for the year, but we're looking at 38 total for this year, uh, which is a little bit more than last year, what we budgeted for, but we did have some changes as far as classifications and memberships, including the corporate and designees. Uh, total current social resignation is at 30, and then that's on track. Uh, we'd like to welcome our new members. Um, so we're going to golf members and social members while they wait to get their spot on a professional wait list. Um, this will be the last slide for membership. Usually we have a marketing slide, but we change to update um, uh, everybody quarterly or as needed. There's one update that I cannot wait to tell you. We have a significant five-star rating on Yelp, which is kind of unheard of. So we have our own QR code, which we put in the dining room. So feel free to keep us there if you want to scan that code and uh, give us some more five-star ratings so we can keep that going. Um, so that will be in the dining room. So uh, good job, members, and um, good job, team. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right, any questions? Good evening, everybody. Chef Justin here um, to report on the kitchen. Uh, we did order a new oven. It's called a Auto Sham, basically a cooking cabinet. Um, purchase was approved. This will definitely help with um, cutting labor during brunches and morning shifts. Um, let's say we have four prime ribs, we need a fire for Santa's brunch. 
We can fire the night before, set the temperature, and in the morning when we get in, it'll be at temperature where we want it to be cooked at. Um, so there won't, we won't have to bring those additional two cooks in in the morning so early, so cut off two hours. Um, and this will actually help with impacting regular service for members during uh, banquets and weddings and um, Monday events and whatnot like that. Um, we did hire, finally get a uh, hire a cook. Her name is uh, Sienna, uh, previous worked at the Sanctuary Golf Course, and she is back there working uh, Sante right now. So welcome her to the club. Um, just working on annual staff performance reviews, budgets, and holiday events coming up. Um, and then we have a bunch of Thanksgiving orders going out tomorrow um, from two to four, and they will be hot, or not hot, but ready to go. Yeah, that's right. What do you got, Kevin? Um, so our December events uh, for reservations, uh, a lot of our events were close to capacity. Uh, we do have some room for candlelights, uh, but we only have two to three tables left for snowball. Um, so if you're interested in attending, please let us know, or please let me know uh, by emailing me, and I can uh, accommodate uh, those uh, reservations. Uh, Santa brunch. Uh, we are sold out for the 10 a.m. seating uh, with a limited seating at the 12:30 session. So for that event specifically, we have 120 people for the 10 a.m. and about 110 for the 12:30 seating. So we're very close to pushing the limit of yeah. occupancy. Um, <clears throat> another update is our holiday event dress code. Uh, and cancellation policy. Um, so after our last house meeting, uh, we agreed to a 24 hour cancellation policy for events. So that should give people enough time to uh, give notice of, uh, of them not attending one of our events. So uh, if there's a medical emergency or uh, unforeseen uh, circumstance, please let me know, we'll make the a proper adjustment there. Um, uh, dress code. Um, the dress code for Snowball is uh, uh, a black tie optional event uh, and formal dress code uh, Dress code for ladies as well. So that, that would be a cocktail dress or uh, a suit dress. Um, so we've had a lot of questions on that before. So uh, I did put that in my prayer reviews as well. So that people are aware that we do have a dress code attire uh, for our formal uh, holiday event. Uh, and another update that we are fully staffed for the front of the house operation. Um, we've had a lot of our team, team members stay, stay with us um, through the summer uh, and will be with us through the remainder of the year leading into next year. So we need to, we need members to attend all of our events to make sure we're getting, giving them enough hours. So uh, we're trending in the right direction. Calendars uh, for December, the December calendar and events. Uh, we did add another event, the gingerbread decorating party. So that'll be for the kids uh, in late December. So if you guys are interested in bringing your grandchildren or uh, kids to this event, uh, it's a new event that we haven't done before. Any questions? Any comments online? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, great job, everybody. I get a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn the meeting for this month. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the faces out there. Yeah, I can't believe you guys don't have to push second. All in favor. Right, night. Aye. Aye. <laughs>